um, Policies and Services Subcommittee of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. Uh, this is our 11th meeting. Uh, and uh, today's Monday, Feb Monday, February 22nd. Um, the meeting is being held on Zoom, it's being recorded. And uh, we will start the meeting uh, after we take roll. We'll start the meeting with public comment for anybody who would like to um, uh, speak to us. And uh, I'm not worried about uh, time or uh, volume uh, uh, at this point. So uh, people are welcome to say whatever they want and just keep it to a reasonable length of time. The let's uh, Noah just go around and say the, the, the say our names. <laughs> Nick. I'm here. <laughs> David. Here. Namdi. Here. Cynthia. Uh, here and a comment about public comment after this is done. Sorry. Yeah, okay. no worries. And Elizabeth is not here. Okay. Um, your your comment, Cynthia. Nick, I I really strongly recommend you limit the time. Oh yeah. Uh, of each well, speaker. I, I would. I uh, the guideline will be three minutes per speaker. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I'm just I, I will flex on that if needed, but the guideline will will be three minutes. Um, I just need to um, ask if anybody would like to, um, uh, I, I don't know what the formal term is, but approve the minutes and then a second, which just came out today. And uh, if anybody would like to do that, I'm sure we can put that, put that aside. Uh, motion to approve minutes from the last meeting. Second. Okay, okay. minutes are approved. Um, all right, thank um, you. I, can I just, I'm so sorry, but um, I'm gonna abstain because I have not read them. Okay, so so Cynthia, if you, in reading them, you, you, um, you come up with a correction, just bring it up at the next meeting and we'll have Noah do that. Yeah. And- uh, Thanks Noah. Yeah, great. Um, well, let me, uh, since it's um, there are seven people on on the call, um, if uh, anybody from the public would like to say something uh, or uh, share your thoughts uh, with us, uh, we can start the meeting and uh, would be glad to to listen. Uh, I see that Wendy would like to say something, and um, after Wendy's done, I will. Uh, check in with other callers um, um, and just see if anybody else wants to say anything. Go ahead, Wendy. I, I, Hello, everybody. Um, I wanted to go last, but I may be going last. I'm not really sure. <laughs> you might there, there's on. actually someone who yeah. has had his hand up for quite and, some Okay. That's what oh, I Oh, I'm sorry. Saying. I'm not looking at that. Let me, let me um, open that up. And I see that Colin user one would like to say something. And actually, Wendy, I'm gonna ask, because you'd like to go last and because Colin user one already had their hand up, if it's okay, I will ask them to, to go first. Okay, thank you, thank you, Wendy. Um, Colin user one, go ahead. No. Hi, this is Jane Doe. I called in on the 11th. I'm a victim of sexual assault. So before I continue, I, I really have to get some clarification around why Cynthia just asked to limit comment. Because when I called in the initial night, the comments were seven minutes, and then they were abruptly changed to two minutes. And now they're three minutes. And for someone who is a victim, giving testimony, it's really disorienting and rattling not to be able to finish my thoughts. So before we start, can someone please get back to me on why it's very important to limit this to three minutes? And if I could speak, that would be great. Uh, I'll be glad to respond. And if anybody else would like to add anything, mm -hmm. I welcome you. Um, the um, uh, Jane, the, when you called in the other night, that was um, our public hearing. And the public hearing um, 
uh, guidelines and, and structure is, is different and it's more interactional. Um, and the entire purpose of the public hearing is to welcome comment and to interact with comment where it's requested. Um, the subcommittees have business to attend to. And the only reason we limit it is so that we can get to our, the business part of the meeting. And generally the guidelines been three minutes. And I was just saying, I'm willing to flex on that a minute or two because there's so few people on the call. But it, it's important that we both be open to hearing from the public, but we have business we have to accomplish in the meeting. And I hope, I hope that explains why you're you're hearing different structures for different meetings. Can I just get some clarification from Cynthia? Uh, Cynthia, because she really strongly recommended it. So is that because she needs more time to deliberate? I'm just a little confused. Because yeah, it wasn't okay. you, it wasn't you, Nick, that said that, it was her. So I really need to, I, re, I really need to understand who the commissioners are and what their reasons are. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jane, for asking. Um, so all of our meetings are subject to open meeting law in the city. So what that, what that does is it allows us to set limits on time of various items on the agenda. And we set the limit of 15 minutes um, for, for general comments for a group of people to comment. So the reason I reminded Nick about the time limitation is that um, sometimes callers come in and they don't know that, you know, there's a, a one minute limit, two minute, three minute, four minute. And that's why I wanted to just remind him to have the limit, but he was going to do that anyway. And I just interrupted him before he put the limit in. I mean, I think he said he would keep it open, but um, it's, it's really important as he said, if we kept it open for a longer period of time, we would never get our, um, our, our agenda done. The other thing I wanna encourage you is that we just released a survey for members of the public who may feel uncomfortable doing this um, in an open meeting and they can write their entire story, their lived experience on this survey. And we're gonna be publicizing that survey very shortly throughout the city. So that's another way that you can give your complete story completely interrupted. So does that answer your question? It does sort of, it just, never mind. <laughs> I have a lot of, I have questions about a lot of things, but so I'm guessing this is three to five, someone stop me if it's not helpful to what your agenda is. Before she begins, no. I, I interrupt for a moment before the speaker. Yeah, please. Yeah, I just, I, you know, normally I don't speak up in these circumstances. I'm going to assert some um, uh, expertise as a psychologist, licensed and specialist in psychological trauma um, to say that I really heard what the caller just said about her needs in order to do this disclosure. And it strikes me that it, it's arbitrary for us to set the limit to three minutes for this particular call. If she came in expecting that she might have up to seven minutes or whatever time she needs, um, I, I think we should allow it. I guess I wanna make a formal motion that we allow this. Um, we have 15 minutes for public commentary. We have two speakers. I don't see a reason why we couldn't say about seven minutes for each person under these circumstances. And unless there's an objection, I'd like to actually make that motion. Do I hear a second? Well, I'll, I'll second the motion, but I, I note we all, we're already 11 minutes into our meeting, but. I'm just, yeah. And time is, is precious for all of us for different reasons. And, and just, just like, getting I, on this call was difficult. And so is keeping anonymity, finding a phone that's safe, being protected as a victim through the victim. I mean, there's a, I could, yeah, I, 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 have to, I don't think you should have to defend all that. So, okay, we've got a second. Do we want got to it. allow this? Let, let's move forward. Uh, yeah. Jane, I'm, I'm going to start your timer now from zero at five minutes. I'll let you know when we've we've reached five minutes and let's just see where we're at then. Does that, if, is that okay, okay with you? It, I'm going to go and then you just stop when you feel like it. it. Most of you can listen to the first time that I called. 
which was recorded. It was on the 11th. It was towards the end of the meeting. I hope you do. It was really difficult for me to first call in. Since having called in, I've reviewed many of your videos. I've tried to look at your minutes, which are incomplete and not all publicly posted, which is in violation of state law. That's another issue. I just want to get some stuff out that's really critical. Um, the, the last time I heard this meeting, which was on the 16th, I'm going to talk about some stuff that happened, which kind of is personal, but also bothered me. Nandi, who is a professor at Smith, um, was trying to talk about holding different notions of safety for all of us in mind. And as a victim, I just want you to know that he's really validating. And I've listened and watched all of you really closely. And I don't know him, but I feel really safe with him. And he's a minority. I'm not. That really affected me because of his professional background. And he also talks about listening to how the police department helps us, listens about how the police department helps the Smith students. Most of you don't know that I have an affiliation to the college, a very close one. It's something I don't need to go into right now, but he's right. The police do protect Smithies, and they're a huge part of this. They're a big group, a big stakeholder group, really need to be considered. And I felt like when I was listening to that meeting, he was talking about bringing Smith down to talk and give a presentation, and he had done all this research and was so helpful. But I felt like the other commissioners, they were like not listening to him and not, not hearing him. And he wants reliable data and he's really thinking and that's so important and for me as a victim like i need someone like that keeping me safe like i need that i need to know you guys hear that he was talking about what happens on campus he was talking about the campus safety department all these things that are really relevant he's also talking about something really important we do need to pivot on this commission this is not the same one year ago was different. Right now, we do have violence on other campuses. It is happening. What happened on the 6th in January changed everything. We need our police. We do. And I just, I noticed that and I was like, are they really hearing him? And then everyone started talking about UMass and the hospital. And I'm like, no, Smith is in the jurisdiction. The Northampton Police Department protects Smithies. There's 2,500 of them. They're important. So I just, that really that really got to me. Um, they are stakeholders, and I hope you will listen. I, he really touched me, and I noticed that. And then I just want to say on the commission's preliminary report, there's a lot of abuser and offender friendly language. They talk about protecting them, not allowing them to have a difficult time in jail. They use a lot of language to try to help the abusers. So I don't know if since this subcommittee sent domestic violence over there they're paying attention but they're not it doesn't seem like it from the report the report is, is written in the sections about domestic violence very friendly to offenders and criminals like it will talk about let's have you know let's have their experience in jail be better that the prison sentences harm them but when you're a rapist you have to go to you have to do go to jail. You don't get to have it easier because it's not safe for us. So I really, there's a lot of stuff in that draft that shows that you really haven't researched what happens to us. And I'm real, and this happened right here in Northampton, in this jurisdiction, with our police. It's not something that was just made up by someone who lives somewhere else and is yelling about other places. It's true. And so I was worried about that because the commission draft doesn't show that people are looking at the experiences of victims. And then it feels three of the commissioners don't want an armed response. But for domestic abusers and rapists, the police with the gun is the only thing that stops it. You cannot send a social worker. You guys all might be great social workers, but you need to listen. The armed officer is what stops it. That saves our lives. Why? Because the abuser will continue to do it. They're not going to stop. They will respond to the officer only. You cannot send a social worker. No, you cannot. You can't. So if you take away the money from the police department more even than 10%, then there's less 
officers to protect us. So right now, since I've been reading all about you, I'm terrified. Because every day I go out inside and go, they can't do that again. They cannot take more. Every officer less is less response time for me, right? It takes two of them. It's very important that you protect people like me. Most of us don't make it this far, right? Uh, thank you, Jane. Jane, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say thank you. And I, I, I sincerely wanna thank you for um, giving a very particular perspective. And, uh, um, and uh, if, if you have one more sentence you wanna close with, but I think we, we should move on at this point. Yeah, no, just thank you for telling me that I could put it in writing. That's helpful. And then if you had a question, but that I just, I really need to make sure you guys keep us safe. I, it's deadly, you gotta protect us. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you very much. Th thank you. Um, we'll move on now. And uh, Wendy, would you like to say something? Uh, first, I want to say, Jane, thank you. I'm so moved in so many ways by what you just said. And it, it, it wasn't what I expected to be saying at this moment, but it relates very much, which is that I don't think all the voices, I know the, all the voices in the community, all the stakeholder voices in this community are not participating and being heard. And Jane just illustrated that, but there are many, many more Cynthia, you mentioned that there's going to be a survey. I've been following uh, the commission and the and many of the committee members, among the subcommittees as well. And I'm not clear whether that survey will be widely spread or to target certain communities that are usually not part of, you know, typically being uh, surveyed. I want to also just say how much I appreciate the very hard work you are all doing. And Noah, the very hard work you are doing and um, really under a difficult situation. Um, and I'm hoping to participate. I've been doing a lot of work outside, not bringing it to some of you, um, but I'm hoping to participate in the follow-up efforts to the report as the city moves forward in, in whatever it does, depending on whatever it does. But I'm hoping that we can actually do some implementation. Um, and that I, I'm also seeing there's a big picture about policing in America, which is a lot of the comment you're hearing. There's the picture of our department. There's the picture of services needed by a community that is really feeling harmed, multiple communities that are feeling harmed. And then there's a greater community, as David has said in past meetings, who would go, who would say, what? You know, and I think we're starting to get those letters to the editor. So I understand the various this, it's very big and very complicated, but I just mostly appreciate what you're doing and thank you. Bye, I'm gonna turn off my video. Well, th thank you thank you very much for your, your contribution and, okay. and, and for-, for uh, well, One uh, more thing, one more, I meant, I'm sorry, just one more thing, which was about comment period. I really, really encourage you as a longtime public official myself to stick with the three minutes in every meeting. Don't go all over the place. And Jane, I think, articulated why that was important to her. Um, and if you give someone and not someone else, then you get until. So just, I think that's a good idea. I understood your comments about the, the public hearing, which was different than public comment, Nick, but I just want to encourage you to do that. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm and, here, but I'm going. <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate that. I'm, I'm newer to this structure and uh, it all makes sense to me. And okay. uh, I, I take that uh, advice wisely. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, so we're, um, David put out a very, um, uh, a, semi, uh, a pretty comprehensive, maybe not complete, but a pretty comprehensive list of police work and the services that the police provide. And then I reworked it a little bit to, um, to make it, um, uh, to, to look at it with a particular lens. And I wanna first ask if you all have a copy of this and I could actually pull it up, but it's lengthy. I could put it up there if needed, but do all three of you, 
Yeah, I don't know that I have it, Nick. Was it sent today or just? No, I sent it a few days ago. Okay, so, okay, that's fine. So look from you, and then it was. Um, what's it called? What's the document called? Just to make sure I have it. It's it's called police services table or something like that. Just a second, okay. I have to. I, I've got to see if I can find it. Yeah. Um, just one moment, please. So it's a service list NF table summary. Okay. <clears throat> I can find it here. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure I'll I've got it. it. I can I can actually put it up. So okay, yeah, if you want to, that's fine. But otherwise, we'll make sure I have it. Uh, well, uh, people watching uh, may want to see it as oh, well. Yeah, that's cool. Others may, uh, may need that. Let too. me just see what I I can do. Hold on. Uh, with the sharing. Um, Should be asked right now. Um, does this work for people? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just can't scroll through it. You know, I don't think. Right, that's yeah. the, that that's the problem. Um, the the most important thing for me for discussion purposes, because this is my the way I kind of altered David's list was. The, these five categories of, of services, dividing the services into five categories. And I, I guess I'd like to put it to our subcommittee to ask if this looks like a, a, a way that we're interested, a lens that we're interested in looking at these services. Um, uh, in, in these these various categories, because some of them we haven't actually talked about, and uh, and I'll, I'll go through them, and then I'll 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 just open it up for discussion. Um, the 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 green category would be this uh, this community services uh, community safety department that is being considered. Um, by the full commission and by the alternatives committee. The yellow is a, a response that would involve both the police and the alternative department. That it, the expectation is that both would have to work together on those services. The blue uh, is, I, I could have been done this in a different order. The blue is the category that we're saying that some people would say this absolutely requires an armed uh, police uh, person to respond. Uh, and we want, this is, this is the kind of thing that you, you want a, a, a police person to do. Um, the light blue is an invention. I don't know if it exists or if it's possible but there's work that the police do that doesn't require um, uh, uh, an armed officer to, uh, or an overtly armed officer. I, you know, uh, people can carry firearms uh, 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 even if they're not police. Uh, uh, so, um, so, but, but no, no, uh, an, an unarmed um, appearance is the, is the goal. Is, <coughs> Uh, having uh, an officer not in, in, in a military type uh, presentation. Uh, and then I added a pink category for services that don't quite com fit community safety that we really could pull out of the police department if something entirely different was created. But um, that's things like animal control, and also traffic traffic uh, management um, that we don't really have a, a model yet for for those two things. So I, it's more the concept of those five categories, and I'm going to stop at this point, and uh, uh, I'll I'll slowly scroll down so you can see people can see what the various uh, how some of them fell fell out because we may not agree on, on my labeling of the different categories. Nick, once again, thank you for this uh, work and effort in kind of organizing uh, 
including the cats and all the things that you did here. Um, I added a couple of things that um, that David did not have, just so you know. I added warrants be, because that's something I believe uh, only police can do. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes they do, they can be dangerous to implement. So, uh, but, but I, I'm not an expert on this. Um, uh, let's see, what else did I add? Um, <clears throat> I added um, large nonviolent assembly. For example, the protest last summer, um, uh, I think that's an example where you might want to have it primarily um, uh, managed by the community safety but it might be important to have police available in the background if, uh, uh, if something uh, uh, were to get, get out of control at a, at a certain point. Um, but to, to, to just people would have to work together on that kind of thing. Um, and then these last ones are all um, things that, you know, we could, we could say in the future, somebody needs to come up with something for these things, but they're not absolutely necessary uh, for police to do. And Namdi, were you still um, going to finish your thought? I I wasn't sure. Yeah, sorry. No, I don't. I don't. Not, nothing's particular. If you, if you, if you want to go ahead. I mean, I've got some thoughts, but I don't want to. I've already uh, intruded. If you want to go ahead. Um, 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 sure. Um, so thank you, David, and thank you, Nick. Um, I have a few reactions. I am uncomfortable with armed and not armed recommendations and categories. I feel more comfortable with um, um, looking at categories in terms of what could be uh, moved to the Department of Community Safety. That's my sort of initial reaction. And then the other, the other reaction I have is that if we don't put numbers against these, like what, what, the, what the activity rate was for 2019 or whatever year we decide to use, I think they just sort of lend us set us up to say, well, like, well, there's only two of those. So why are you going to put it there? You know, those, that kind of um, um, comment. So um, I, think, I think we've captured most. Um, I don't know if we have without going to the website again, but um, I think primarily it's, I'm just um, not comfortable talking about what should be armed and what shouldn't at this, at this point, I, I think. <clears throat> I view our role as identifying the activities and making some sort of general statements about them, but um, not to the degree of the, you know, the color. So. Yeah, let, let me, let me just interject here. Did I didn't cut you off, did I, Cynthia? No, that was fine. Uh, um, I, I just would say, you know, the, the light blue category is really, um, not re uh, realistic. I mean, police officers, if you're a police officer, you're armed. So you're not going to have an unarmed police detective. Uh, having said that, detectives, uh, um, for the most part, in my experience, their weapons are concealed either with a shoulder holster, holster or sometimes on the belt with a jacket um, over it to the extent that that's of any significance. Um, the only other comment that um, that I had was uh, with with respect to warrants. Um, you know, serving warrants can be very dangerous. You know, and um, <clears throat> there are in 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 I don't think Northampton has, but in some cities there are you know fugitive apprehension units. And uh, the U.S. Marshals have a fugitive apprehension unit, which local departments can call in for any interstate um, 
somebody who's uh, uh, fled uh, interstate and they will handle it. It, it is a very dangerous job. Um, on the other hand, um, I read an article somewhere and I wish I could give you the site for it that the vast majority of warrants are for low level misdemeanors, nonviolent um, stuff, traffic offenses, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, what, what I think that I would be looking for is for some way to, um, uh, on those kind of things, misdemeanor offenses, I think that there is a, 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 a there, there should be a requirement that more than one effort be made to get the person to respond uh, through non-contact, send a letter, leave a, uh, a note on the door. Um, you know, there is a warrant out for you for um, speeding. Uh, you failed to show up in court. Um, if you don't respond by such and such a day, you may be subject to arrest. And I think you can, you can eliminate a lot of um, contact with armed police officers that way. And um, I'll try to take a look at this. I, I believe there are studies on this, the number of people that actually do respond to a second effort. Um, so other than that, um, I don't have a whole lot of uh, comment on the way things were sort of sorted out here. Can I, uh, unless somebody else, can I respond to Cynthia? Okay. Um, the, the, my term, my terminology is naive and I don't, I don't know the right, I don't care about the arms. That's not, it's not, it's not whether they're armed or unarmed. It's, it's the, uh, I, I, I'm hearing, and maybe I'm misunderstand, misunderstanding this, but I'm hearing that the militaristic authority heavy, heavy presence of, of police is a very um, counterproductive presentation in, in, in certain, in, in many situations. So what, what, by the light blue category, I don't really, I'm not really referring to arms and I, I, I might redo it if I were to rewrite it now. And, and that is, I'm, I'm talking about um, somebody who's not coming with, uh, you know, um, th these uh, military bulletproof vests and the, 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 the sidearms and the, uh, the, the whole militaristic presence as opposed to a, a police investigator who's coming looking more like an, a, 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 a regular resident or citizen who, who um, uh, is, is doing business that's not so emphasizing um, the, the, the military presentation. I, I, and maybe it's that there, so there's two issues. One is, is that, is that totally unrealistic? And the second issue is, is that really what, would that make a difference? Would that, would that really matter to, to people? Because what I'm, what I'm seeing is that you need highly trained individuals for a lot of these light blue categories. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, following up a rape, assault and battery requires a certain specialized expertise. Um, uh, uh, getting information for um, uh, charges for, uh, for theft uh, requires certain expertise. I'm just going down the list right now. Um, uh, child pornography, prostitution, those are really, um, uh, uh, you know, require expertise. Um, uh, and then uh, going to public events doesn't, doesn't re require expertise, but 
what kind of, what, how do we want our police presenting to the community is part of the question there. Those are the, the ones that I have in the light blue. I don't think those are the main ones. And that's, that's why I wasn't, maybe if I were to change the terminology, but I don't know if there's a capacity um, for police to, or, or whether they already do, uh, whether they already are not, um, you know, they're, they're sending different categories of uh, police to some of these things. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Namdi. Um, thanks. So I, I got uh, frozen out and missed some of the dialogues. So hopefully nothing I say here is going to be um, foolishly naive. But I want to say, Nick, that I, I do agree with your effort to make a distinction between armed and unarmed. Not like you, I hear um, a, a community, part of the community response is to the presence of arms, the presence of a uniform. And so, you know, I, I, I sort of like the idea of us taking a stab at thinking about how services could be um, your general gist of this, trying to figure out who, who else could do this in an unarmed, ununiformed way. Um, the first thought that came to mind when you presented it this way is that it, for me, it, it mirrored the dilemma that we face on the Smith College campus about what our police officers should do and not do. And years ago, that community decided they did not want the campus police to be armed. And so, you know, that, that has led to kind of a model of like public safety officer on campus who doesn't wear, doesn't use a gun. So there, there's a model for that, at least on the campuses. And, and so, I, and I don't think in my mind, I think what you're talking about could overlap with Cynthia's um, uh, vision, which what she said earlier about the about the us putting energy into this new community um, agency that handles some of these tasks. Perhaps people who work in that agency would wear their own sort of distinct uniforms. But I I, I do think that it's important to clearly signal to the public that there are some officials who can, who who are who are wearing a certain uniform for which one would expect that there might there would be a gun. But more importantly than the gun is this is a person empowered to use force to compel you to do what the state wants you to do. I mean, so the gun is just is one tool among the many that the police have. And in, and in a sense, I, I do think that police will likely push back. I don't know, Nick, I don't know the answer to your question about whether there's some police who go into some situations unarmed, but I think that the police would probably not want, they would cite their own vulnerability um, if they were compelled to you know, disarm. That, that was the fight they had on the Smith College campus. And so I think it would be cleaner if you had different roles, clearly marked by different colors, different uniforms, different whatever. And, and, and the clean line is, you know, one group is you know, armed and can use force and the other group, you know, uh, can't, can't use force, is not licensed to use force, but is still in this role of, um, you know, notifying the public when they're in violation of certain things. So to me, I think that's, that is crucial. I totally agree with you that a lot of the reaction people are having to policing has to do with the symbolism of the uniform, the power to use force and the worry that that force will be used in a discriminatory way. Um, so, so I, I think I think it's a crucial, and I think and I think it is something that we should think about. Like you know, kind of what are the roles where we do want to maintain and think it is necessary to have somebody who can, if they need to, use force to compel people to do things. To me, that that's the bottom line. The gun is just one example of the kind of force they might use. Um, that's my I guess basically my two cents on this. I just want to say, I think no matter what, police will, will carry firearms. It's, it's, it's more, and, and maybe it's more, I'm just, I'm trying to demilitarize. I'm saying certain events would benefit from a demilitarized presence mm -hmm. and a uh, presentation. And, um, and, and I, I think, we could make that recommendation and know that may good chance police we'd get no buy-in but but I, I i i i'm i guess i'm asking if we think it's a worthwhile recommendation to say there are some situations where the police presence is warranted. Is that the recommendations? Or? The 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 recommendation. I want to I want to drop arm armaments out and say um, that uh, that um, 
that there are situations that require police expert that don't require a, 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 a visual presentation of uh, uh, an uh, armed authority, uh, of an armed authority. That the, in fact, a, uh, a, a, more, a more civilian presentation would, would be more beneficial uh, in, in having uh, uh, community relationships and positive outcomes. And, and, and the police may already do that, actually. I think they do, Nick. Uh, I mean, you're, you know, when I'm looking at your light blue category here. Uh, I mean, you know, to me, first of all, I think you, you, you can't ask police to go on calls and not be armed. I mean, it's either a police matter or it's not a police matter. So to use, uh, uh, and I mean, I think we all are in agreement that if someone calls and says, uh, uh, I'm being raped, somebody's beating me, we expect an armed police response. Um, but if you move down to what you've put in the light blue category here, um, you know, it, 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 it's not subject to easy, gross generalizations. Um, for example, child pornographers. I, I, I've represented child pornographers. Frankly, many of them are just pathetic, um, and uh, they're 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 and they're they're not violent. There's no reason to think they're going to be violent or 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 dangerous to anyone. However, I've been doing this long enough to know that I'll, you'll never get a police officer to agree with that. You you never know because someone will say because police officers will say. Um, he may become violent to protect his stash or to be to to uh, avoid uh, uh, being arrested. Having said that, most of the child pornography cases that I have represented people on are not arrested. Troopers or some cases local police officers knock on the door. Uh, we have a search warrant. We want to seize your computers, uh, and they're not arrested. They're, uh, they come back, they're, they're summonsed in later after there's been a, um, a uh, assessment of what's uh, on the, the, the computer. Um, so, uh, I mean, I put, putting, putting that one aside for now, um, and, and I guess what I'm trying to do here is to, to answer the question that Nick posed, which is, you know, maybe the police already do this. I, I, I'm telling you, to my, my, in my experience, what they do do. Um, statutory rape is a, uh, a different um, uh, situation. Statutory rape, uh, I assume everybody's familiar with the term. It, it, it essentially just means, in Massachusetts, it means sex with someone under the age of 16. Um, it is, uh, by definition, not a forcible uh, um, rape or they would be charged with uh, rape by force. It's two separate um, statutes. Um, most of the cases that I've been involved in uh, alleging statutory rape, it's not a situation where someone calls the police, I'm being raped. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that uh, is divulged over time. Usually it's a very painful process for the, the, the victim. Um, and um, there, there, there really is no reason. And I think that this is what we're hearing from the, the, the people in the uh, community that, that Elizabeth talked about uh, at many of our meetings, uh, victim of getting police out of sexual assault. I don't think Elizabeth was suggesting that if someone calls and says, I'm being raped, there's a knife to my throat that we shouldn't send the police. I think what she's talking about is what often happens is this happened last weekend. Uh, I was with this guy. I'd only seen him twice before. Uh, I told him to stop. He wouldn't stop. Um, now that person needs to be held accountable for sure. But do we need the police to go to the victim of that? Um, and I think that what we're hearing from the community is no, you don't. There, the, you, you need someone who is skilled in dealing with the victims of sexual assault. And eventually, if that person cannot be located or does not respond to uh, a summons, 
police are going to have to be involved to get that person before the court. But the initial contact does not have to be from an armed police officer. So that th those are, you know, those are that covers um, a lot of what you've got in, uh, okay. in light blue. All right. So listen, I'm convinced that we're. Th I want to move on. I unless Namdi has an objection, I'm I'm convinced that this is not a meaningful category. I really actually. This discussion has been helpful to me because I'm, I'm, I'm first of all, I'm seeing that it's a very small number. Um, uh, it's a very small percentage of the work. Half of it is already being done in, in other ways. And I wanna move on and I wanna to get to the more, the more fundamental issues. And, and I think we need to do that um, if that's okay. Uh, we can move on. I, I do feel like I want to just add, add something. I, I, I'm not opposed to where you're going with this, but I do want to say that if you, what you mean is that the light blue and the green are the same category, or in other words, I, I, I guess I, I would object for the record if, if, if we're going to say that there is no reason to make a distinction between how, how the community reacts to someone who's armed and uniformed versus not. Um, you know, I, I think there was something useful in you trying to make that distinction, but but I'm not sure that we would say that we should ask police to show up unarmed. Um, and and I'm, I'm not sure much is gained by saying, show up in your civilian clothes with your, with your gun concealed. Right. I, I don't think that that has any, yeah. But I think uh, having a community member who's trained to respond, uh, some, you know, the model in my mind is, is like the person who writes your parking, you know, your meter tickets, your, you know, your parking tickets. We don't expect that person to be armed. They are sanctioned to, you know, to show to, to give us a violation when we committed violations, but we don't expect that they're going to enforce the law with 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 arms. And I think trying to think about a role like that, like a kind of someone who works with this community agency who enforce who engages in some ways, but the public understands will not use force against them and isn't armed. And, and I think they probably can't be police officers for all the reasons people said the police expect to be able to be armed. And I think it's not fair to the police officer to put them in that situation where it's not clear whether they're armed or not. So we need some Got separate. It. To do Got it. it. We're, right. we're good. I, the only thing I'm going to say is I'm I would recommend we convert presentations and events to yellow so that we have both community safety and, and armed police at the same events wherever possible so that people start thinking community safety over police. Um, and the others would probably be all shifted to the blue, to the dark blue they require uh, a the 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 Department of Police to uh, respond because they have the the expertise and, and special knowledge to 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 do these things. And it's a small percentage, very small percentage. Well, I I don't agree that uh, the the examples that I just gave require an armed uh, police presence. Um, on the other hand, I think it's hard to put them in one category or another. It depends on the nature of the call. For example, um, if, if, if police get a call that, um, uh, or, or, you know, I'm gonna use the child pornographers uh, uh, again. I mean, some of these are, uh, th there was just a case in the news in Florida where those two officers were killed by a child pornographer. It was a huge child pornography ring. Now that's the first time I've ever heard of something like that happen. It's probably not the first time, but it's the first time I've ever heard of it happening. So there, it, it, it is very case specific. On the other hand, as I said, um, I, my, one, of, one of my current child pornography defendants is a 75 year old man with a, uh, a stage four um, uh, cancer diagnosis. I, I don't, the, the, there was not an armed, there was not, he was not arrested. Um, there were um, detectives who came to his home. Uh, he was summoned into court. And, and again, that's very typical. So my point is, is I don't think you can put, you can just say, okay, this is a police response. This, is, uh, this These are all police responses. And the same is true with with um, statutory rape. Some people who commit statutory rape are people with a history of uh, violence. Um, many are not. Many are um, d 
dysf socially dysfunctional people. Uh, many are people that are um, uh, not terribly much older than the victims themselves. Um, so I, I, I guess my objection here is to lumping them all into the blue category, saying this requires an armed police response. So let I, I'm going to propose, if you agree, that we go down the list and see if we can have a general consensus on the categorization, because that's what dispatch, I, I'm assuming that dispatch in the new model will have to evaluate this is usually an armed police response, but in this case, because we know the range of services, we're going to send it to community safety. Clearly, a judgment needs to be made on every single call. But I'm wondering if, if we want to, as a subcommittee, just see if we agree on the categorization of services. On the categorization of services in relationship to what? In relationship to, is this uh, uh, primarily with the police? Is, it this, is this suitable for community safety? Um, is this uh, a co-response uh, 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 obligation? Or is this um, something that we haven't invented yet, like traffic and animal control? I guess I would just um, ask, are we qualified to, to have an opinion on that? I guess we can have an opinion on anything. And secondly, um, have we abandoned, I mean, where is the data on this new categorization? Like how, how our job was to review policies and procedures, right? And yes. so, so what percentage of police time is spent on the category of criminal calls versus non-criminal calls versus minor public disturbances. Are we going to do that level of detail as well? I'm just trying to stay true to our mission and not get too much into alternatives. I'm, the way I understand what we're trying to do uh, is that we're looking at a particular um, uh, aspect of police work, um, current practice, and uh, uh, seeing if there's any outstanding problems or whether it's conducive to um, uh, having an alternative approach. Uh, yeah. That's the way I was understanding it. Yeah. You know, I don't know what the relevant data are here, Cynthia, for, but I, I, I don't think that we would have to show that the Northampton Police is currently um, handling a high volume of something in, in a given category to justify what Nick is trying to do. Again, I keep coming back to this basic point that you want police, armed police, on the worst day of your life, which you hope happens very rarely. I, I think we should not get distracted by, you know, what we can show large numbers of volumes of. It's because once we dismantle the police department, uh, in this town, as, as many people are you know, very strongly trying to do, we're going to create some cracks. And so when things go wrong, we, we want to be able to anticipate what those cracks are going to be and be able to sort of say who's going to fill those cracks. I don't think the data needs to be what has already, I mean, we certainly are helped by saying we've had a certain number of assaults or arsons and whatever in this town already, and we can say that. But I don't know, I guess, I, I guess I'm guess i not sure, Cynthia, what, what, what data um, is necessary to proceed as Nick is suggesting. I, I feel comfortable with if we've heard any examples of this ever happening in this town or have the plausible belief that this category might happen, then I think it's our business, especially our subcommittee's business, to have some thoughts about how these existing policies and services would translate into the new model. I mean, we don't have to invent exactly you know, the details of the community organization. We should say, here's a service and, and, and here's what we'd like. I would say specific, maybe to make, I think we should be particularly clear about the things we would like to see stay in the hands of the police department. Because I'm not sure anybody else will do that part of it. So, I mean, I think others are probably talking about the alternatives and everything else, but I think we should try to get as clear as we can about what things here look to us, argue for uh, being held in the hands of the current Northampton Police Department. So at least we have that in place, as well as if we feel like we want to comment on what should go to some other community organization. That to me, that's a secondary thought. So anyway, but, so to me, I think we can proceed without a lot of numeric data. That's my, my bottom line. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I, I, I don't, I don't, it, it seems to me that we're, we're really, what we really should be doing is sorting out what we need police on and what things police do that we feel could be better done by another entity. And how much that costs or how much time it takes. I mean, it became obvious to me a long time ago that you know we are not going to get down to a granular level in this report. Uh, um, you know, we're we're going to we're going to say, look, he, he, you asked us to take a look at policing. Here, here's what we've done. Here's the things that police do now that we think um, they don't have to do. Um, how you move them into what we propose, this new department, if that's what we end up proposing, or how existing city departments could be expanded to um, take over these sort of things, that's, that's for the next commission that comes along, or it's for the city council. I mean, we're, we're not going to be able to get down to that level of detail. So I really think we should just be creating, for the most part, um, I, I mean, with all due respect to the five categories, I mean, I think it's two, maybe three categories. This is police business. This is something for the new um, uh, community safety or whatever we're calling it. And the third one maybe is, uh, as people have pointed out, traffic. Maybe this goes into another, uh, maybe this goes into a, a transportation department or it goes into an expanded parking department. Uh, uh, department, uh, which is renamed as a transportation department or something like that. But I think that's, that's what we do. I think that's what we, we got to do is sort them into piles. So just one thing to add, I do think it's worth thinking about the co-response. I think it's one of the features of Nick's system. Um, so I think three, three categories as well. I think police business, community business only, and something we think probably has to be some kind of co-response is a useful thing for us to do. Um, and I don't know why we wouldn't put the traffic into the so-called, into the magic community been that we haven't the ill-defined community category that you know why not just say that should be their job too to figure this out yeah um, that way we've got three you know um go ahead um i you know i'm i am very disturbed by the colors if we can get it down to two or three i'll be happy <laughs> um but i just want to um my overall vision of our work in the commission is, um, it's taken me a, a while to get there, but um, is that there are different perceptions of what safety is in our community. And I wanna hold those two different perceptions in up there. And when, I, when I'm guided by putting colors and categories that some people feel safe with a certain behavior and other people do not. And so what I wanna guide myself is how do I make this community that I live in safe for everybody? And knowing full well that 911 will be available, that people who feel safe by calling 911 will be able to continue to do that, right? Um, and that I, I don't, you know, I hope we're not dismantling as much as we're trying to kind of reimagine the police department. So, um, with with the community safety department, and I just hope I'm I've got the qualifications to say, yeah, Pierre can handle that, <laughs> you know, and move this into um, into community safety. So, um, but I'm happy to to take a take a stab at it. If, if folks feel that you know the numbers and all that is is not necessary for this uh, subcommittee. But I also know that the Alternatives Committee is working pretty hard in more granular detail to a certain degree. And um, it's good to kind of keep that in mind. The big, um, one of the big things is domestic violence is just, you know, we, are, we still need a person um, or a, uh, um, sorry, not a person, but um, some of the folks like Safe Passage or, or Nelquit to come talk to us about their role and how they deal with it. And we're having we're having a difficult time doing that, quite frankly. So, um, because it domestic violence requires a police response by law, as we have been told. So, so anyway, I don't want to hold things up anymore. But um, thank you for I, having the full discussion. 
let's move forward. But Cynthia, I'm not fully understanding your hesitation. And I, I take your opinion. I, I always respect your opinion. So I, I'm just not sure what where you're feeling this could be misunderstood. I think, I just feel like we're trying to differentiate um, what is, what is um, in our opinion, having looked at the practices and policies of the, and the way the, the police department works, what we think could be considered by community a community safety department or by another department, but that we're not saying this must be done by another department. It's just, and, this is yeah. open for, as a possibility. Yep, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. We can move on. Okay, so can we just go down and just see if we agree on, uh, 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 agree can on- I ask, Can I ask, you did some things that kind of consolidated some of the things that David did. So, um, so I'm not sure which list we should go down with. For instance, you have under non-criminal calls warrants, and then animal control is really a non-criminal call. You know, so I'm just not sure how we're going to do that. Which list should we go down? I can I can go back to David's list. The the I didn't consolidate as much as um, uh, uh, expanded in some cases. Okay. Um, uh, in some cases, for example, under the number two category, I, I said not just rape and indecent assault, but I, I said one that was emergency and one that was non-emergent. And I'm, I'm willing just to remove the non-emergent one. Um, no, it's okay. I just wanted to make sure, I, just so we know what list we're working off of. Yeah, no, it's, I included everything that David, that, okay. uh, that was on David's list. Um, so just starting from the top, um, uh, I'll, I'll say the category and then uh, open it up for um, agree, disagree, or discussion. Uh, felony crimes against the person. Uh, I said police response. Agree. Okay. Miss, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll just, and if somebody, Unless I hear disagree or let's talk about this, I'll keep going. Um, yeah, can, can I just, can I yep. just, uh, you know, and I, I really don't want to nitpick here, um, but again, I lumping these all together, it, it, it it's, I, I mean, I think I can certainly agree that felony crimes against the person, yes, that should require um, a police response. Um, but I recently had a call with two um, young women um, who got uh, into an argument in their apartment and one claims the other stabbed her with a fork. That's technically a felony crime against the person. The police did respond. It was not Northampton. But I, if we're really concerned about reducing armed police presence, that to me is clearly a case that did not require a police response. Um, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't wanna get hung up on that because I, I think that in general, in general, yes, felony crimes against the person requires an armed police response. But I, I don't think we wanna lose sight of the fact that the goal here is to, or I, in my view, the goal is to reduce the footprint of the police. And that there are things that may technically meet that requirement that do not require an armed police presence. Okay, David, your point is, is an excellent one. And it's a, to me, it's a problem of language. As soon as we put in felony, you get into, it's like the word cr crime or criminal. We don't, it, it's not, it, it, it puts us into that area of, of, of uh, uh, poor, the, you know, the, the inequitable uh, way that the law is, is enforced. If this was a behavioral list, it would be different. If it was, if it was violence against a person, uh, uh, it, might, it, it might be more conducive. Uh, I, it, it's a language issue and I don't know how to, I, I think the, 
objection you're raising is important because it's going to, people will have a reaction if we categorize them by the legal definitions because then tria then dispatch will say oh this sounds like a felony we'll send the police as opposed to is this something that we could be sending community safety to i don't know how to get around that i don't i don't have a good answer for this um uh i you know the idea of breaking it down seemed interesting to me but now i'm i'm seeing that everybody's going to have their own way of breaking down what the calls are about. And, and I think, you know, I, I see, I don't agree with you that it's a question of language, because as I said, the description I just described to you technically meets the description of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, a felony crime of violence. Yet, these are two um, young women with no prior criminal history there there was it was not an ongoing battle that was being waged um one called the police on the other and said you know we got into an argument and she stabbed me with a fork i, I mean if we're really serious about reducing arm footprint i think that a a, a 911 operator and we this comes back to something we've talked about many times is the need for really you know you you can ask that car are you in danger are you, do you feel safe at the moment? If, if, if the answer is I'm fine, uh, I'm not in the apartment any longer, which was the case here, well, then why do we have to send an armed police officer? Um, now, you know, that person has the right, I mean, maybe on investigation, a, a police officer does have to get involved later on, but it shouldn't be the first response. It, it strikes me that that's a more kind of advanced case that you're raising, David, and, and maybe for, our, you know, again, that strikes me as something we could, that the next commission could take up. But I think if we do the work of at least doing an initial sort of sorting of, if, if we end up with a pile of things that are currently being done by the police, that at the end of our process, now we're sort of recommending gets moved to this community organization, I think we would have done a lot of good. And, and the next level of people can kind of figure out um, how to how to tease apart one felony assault from another felony assault because you know in the example that you just gave it, it sounded a lot to me like something that you know uh, you know your rendering of it uh, sounds benign enough but i think there's enough like not unknowable things when you go into any domestic situation like what's the state of mind of this person wielding the fork like what does it take to get someone to a stage where they actually stab another person with a fork what's going on with them how violent are there is there any other weapon in the house are they going to be you know, how dysregulated is a person when they do that i mean yes it's a young woman but you know, i mean young women can do you know, can, I, I know of cases where young women stab other women to death, you know, so, um, so you just like, so anytime there's like violence committed against another person, I can imagine as you, would, I'm sure you can do David, um, cops saying, well, you know, we need to get in there and, and see and see what the situation is, because they can tell you a million stories of things that went terribly wrong. Um, so I'm not sure we're going to solve that. I, I think some kind of advanced triage will need to, but um, anyway, I, I'm okay with that imperfection, as long as we could kind of get ourselves to a place where we really are taking some things off the plate of police and moving it to the community. And just to add to that, David, my, my question is, are we, do we wanna um, give some categorization to these things? Because as soon as we begin to categorize, there will be exceptions. There's, there's no category here that won't have an exception. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I mean, a person kicking another person could be a felony for all I know, and a shoe is a weapon. Uh, um, and maybe it needs, I don't know. So my, the question is, do we, want to, do we want to do this process or not? I mean, we could be a, less formal about it and, and kind of just scroll through your list and, and discuss anything that, that people know that they object. I mean, we don't have to go That's item fine. by item necessarily. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, or we can go with the larger categories. I'm um, going to, I'd like to, I'd like to go, I'd like people to scroll through the list, but I'd like to look at the light blues and ask okay. what color you would switch it to. Okay. Uh, that. I'm going to get rid of the light blue category, so. So yeah, there's 
not going to be any more light blue option. Is that what? Right, right. Because everybody, everybody seemed to agree that um, uh, asking a police to go unarmed is just not, it's not a worthwhile endeavor at this point. Yeah. So I think that in, in, the, for the, I think Elizabeth would advise us to turn the, the your light blue um, rape, indecent assault and battery to green. Um, you know, um, I, I think, you know, with a lot of emphasis in her, what she presented to us to suggest that unless there, unless it's emergent, we should probably not have police involved. We should have people who are more sensitive to working with this community. Um, but you know, our, our speaker to our caller today reminded us about the need for protection of, of, of you know victims as well. So it's it's a, it's a tricky thing. But at least maybe beginning with a community person and then you know who might work with the work with the survivor to um, decide whether there's a need to bring police in as secondarily. So I I, I think I think for that one green. Um, well, that could be talking to yellow. Having trouble. Andy, can you help me? Are you in the? Where are you now that you want to turn to green? Rape I'm sorry, indecent. so this was, this was Nick's violent felony, sex offenses, rape, indecent assault and battery that he has light blue, non-emergent. So it's not in process. It's, um, and you know, Elizabeth spoke to us quite a bit about police, about how people can be made less, feel less safe when a police officer shows up armed. And anyway, we, we, we had a lot of testimony about that. Uh, and a right. Lot of, yeah. I, I just don't want to give the impression that we don't need police for a domestic violence call, which could be rape. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. And and that, I don't think that's what the caller was referring to either. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, to me, just by nature right now, nature of the definition and the requirement for police to respond to domestic violence calls, they have to, right? I I don't think we can. Yeah. Nick, can you kind of just clarify what the non-emergent category of, uh, I'm sorry, Cynthia, are you ask, are you suggesting that, that the yellow domestic violence call be changed to something else? Or are you speaking about the rape, indecent, assault, and battery? I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the light blue rape, indecent, yeah. assault, and battery. Right, and you're saying because that's a form of domestic violence, we need to think about it like we would think about domestic violence. It should be yellow in your- Can be a form, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so uh, non -emer so uh, so both we're talking about a co-response in this case. Well, I mean, Nick, are you by non-emergent? Would you say that that's not domestic violence in because it's not in progress? Is, is, yes, is not yes, I was I was saying it's it's like the next day. So, Cynthia, does that change your? I, I, I'm willing. I'm willing just to entirely remove that that non-emergent category. I mean, I it's think, just. I think that's a, that's real tricky. <laughs> it leaves us open to a lot of. Uh, I'm sorry, Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. Saying the word rape and non-emergent together is. Right, uh, right. So I, 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 I'm, I'm suggesting, just having the the emergent and and the, the police will deal with it however they deal with it oh. in the follow up. I mean, what about the very, very you know, long and detailed uh, feedback we got from Elizabeth? I mean, she really kind of, I mean, she's not here today to restate it, but, but you know, um, I, I'm not sure she entirely shifted, you know, my thinking on this, but I, I do think as a subcommittee, we should just at least talk about, talk about what that means to us. That in you know, my personal view is that if a crime is committed, um, it's appropriate to bring police in, okay? And, and, and to yeah. me, you know, sexual assault is a crime, and, but, the other side of it was the state of mind of the survivor of that kind of situation and the issues of power, having been overpowered physically and then have someone show up in a uniform and a gun that some people might feel much less safe. So to mandate the presence of a police officer in every instance, we were cautioned to try to move away from that and to see is there a way that, you know, that, that we, we only bring the police officer in if there was a need to kind of you know, use force to apprehend somebody or something like that, but that uh, in the absence of that, we would try some other you know, and again, I, as a man, this is one of those issues where, where I'd rather have, you know, you know, I, I don't expect to ever be on the receiving end of, of this kind of situation, but I, I want to make sure I'm appropriately sensitive to this feeling of the power dynamic and the gun. And is that a, is that a, a blessing or a curse? You know, so I, I don't know, it'd be good to have some thoughts about 
the harm that the presence of a police officer might do in these situations. That's what I think Elizabeth asked us to do. Because in the scenario, Namdi, of it's this happened four days ago, if yeah, that's right. that kind of scenario, right. Right? right? I mean, Elizabeth is ringing in my head as well, but it's also what does the victim want at, at that point, you know, and when they make that call? Um, so that's, it's an unknown it's, to me. Yeah. It, see, dispatch could have a role here. Yeah. And, and, and the call comes in, dispatch would say, would you like me to have the community safety people come out and talk with you about how you want to proceed? Yeah, maybe um, the key if, really is empowering the survivor here. And, and yes. it, maybe that's, that's the key, that, that really yeah. making the decision about how to proceed should be put in the hands right. of the survivor, especially, especially if, there's some t if it's not emergent, um, that we, yeah. I, I, I would personally remove the non-emergent just because I think it's a, it, it's a judgment and it's a dispatch issue. It's not, this is not a fundamental core police function. Um, it may be that, a poli that police are needed, in which case the victim can ask for police. Um, and, and I'm, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm in no way comparing rape to burglary, but, but say someone, you realize someone just robbed your house but then you realize four days later, oh my God, someone robbed my house. You're at a different place in the continuum, right? I mean, could Correct. the- Correct. And so that's, I'm not comparing the two, but I'm just saying the sort of non-emergent category, <laughs> I get it, and yet it's still rape. And so I don't know how to- Yeah. yeah. Cynthia, I, in the world of police, it, it's, it's emergency or non-emergency. I mean, it really, Emergency isn't how it feels. It's yeah. it's it's how they respond, mm -hmm. and, and it's a completely different response in a non-emergent situation. Um, the question yeah. is, do you want me to leave that category in there, or or remove non-emergent entirely? And I don't know if it's a different response. You know, <laughs> I don't know if a cop comes right after the event or four days after the event. I don't know that. It, it can, you know, so. And the, I know in many of these instances is also the question of collection of, of evidence. You know, yeah. I, I, was, I was struck with that when people described the traffic situation, why are police involved in these, you know, situations after a car accident or why they involve in certain uh, medical procedures and this idea that when something is emergent, sometimes there's evidence that needs to be gathered. Someone needs to kind of, you know, accurately talk to witnesses and all that stuff. So, um, Anyway, so I don't know if that's a consideration about emergent versus non-emergent. Somebody needs to, for example, make sure that the rape kit is gotten and that there's, you know, whatever evidence needs to be gathered is, is done. I, I don't know, the, like a community person could do that, maybe could do it more sensitively, but looking out for the, for the potential criminal um, charges later and making, so David, if you wanna to speak to this, do you have a sense that there's a difference about officers collecting evidence or being involved if there's a need to collect evidence right away? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we, I think we assume that the, the question for me is, does it, does that require an armed uh, uh, police officer to do that? And I think the answer is, is that's the way it's always been done. But a lot of this stuff is the way it's always been done. Um, so whether we're talking about, and, and you know, again, I, I, I've handled many, many sexual offenses. There, there certainly are those where someone calls this guy broke into my house and raped me or you know obviously that's the highest level of armed response but the vast majority are what has been called in the past i don't even know if they use this term anymore sort of the date rape situation um you know i was with this guy two nights ago i tried to tell him to stop he wouldn't um is he around have you heard from him no um, why do we need an armed police officer to respond to that? And I think these are the situations that Elizabeth is talking about. Now, there may well be a need to collect forensic evidence, but that trained sexual assault investigator can say, I mean, and, and I know for a fact that this is what they do. Have you bathed? Uh, have you, you know, it, 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 looking for, um, and they ask a lot more personal questions that I don't, Think I need to go into, but 
the idea being, is there any forensic evidence that is going to be available? And they are perfectly capable of calling in a trained forensic uh, a technician who is not a police officer coming with a gun. Um, so I, I, I think we need to focus on, you know, I, it, to some extent, I, I would, I, I liked the emergency, non-emergency, but it's, it, it really is just, you know, does this require an armed police response? Um, right. You know, and let me just shift quickly to the breaking and entering thing. I mean, that's another one where it, it, it it's in progress. Well, obviously, but oftentimes it's a situation um, uh, uh, like when I've been victimized by breaking and entering, you, you come home, oh God, somebody broke into my house and you're going to call the police and they're going to say, is the person inside? And oftentimes you your reaction is going to be, well, I mean, I don't know. I assume not, but I don't know. Um, and, you know, we're going to err on the side of caution. We're going to send a police officer in that situation. Um, but on other occasions, it's absolutely clear, you know, no, I mean, this happened. Uh, I, I've been gone for a week and I can't even tell you when it happened. Um, and, uh, you know, a forensic technician can come or what, whatever. Um, I think those are small percentage of calls, but. I, I, I want to keep us moving here. I want to propose that uh, I, the non-emergent category has so many options that we just remove it. I just feel like, uh, and there's also um, some, some difference of opinion about what non-emergent means. So I, I just feel like do, does do do police need to be available for uh, 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 violent sexual assault incidents? And and if the person wants to use um, another agency, they can. Um, but I, I'm just w wondering if if I should just remove it and we should move on. Because we're, we're really getting hung up on this one. Yeah, I know we're getting hung up on, on, on it. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I like the idea. Of, I think this distinction is worth keeping, even if we haven't solved it. Uh, Nick, I, I, I don't want to make it invisible by you removing it. Like, okay. So it, it may not then, be emergent and non-emergent. And another thought, and this might cut. I know. It, I don't think this will hang us up. But another thought for the that might help us is whether an, an arrest is expected or required or requested. So maybe, maybe that's the issue about not not emergency versus non-emergent, but. You know, um, is the survivor asking for an arrest? Like, because I think that power of arrest, that that that's something that, you know, uh, that only a police officer can do. Um, so if there's a perpetrator that needs to be arrested, um, I think that would be a line as opposed to emergency, non-emergency. If we know. put it in yellow, if we put it in yellow, yeah. it leave it leaves the option for either or both respond. Yeah, okay. Okay. Fine. Sure. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. And and to your point, Nandi, there's there's something that I like about empowering the survivor to make a choice. Yeah. And that's that's a new sort of education. Yeah. <laughs> or right. that knowing that you have that option. It's it's kind of interesting for me to think about that a little bit. No, thank you for highlighting that because I, I do think that would be a, a that would be a really helpful reform for us to suggest that, you know. Um, maybe for all sorts of survivors, but particularly these survivors. I mean, so much of these public comments that, that we've been having are about power and lack of power, perception of power. Right, so right. You know, all the stuff about peers and mental health. So, you know, I think this idea of where we can put choice into the equation, it might right. also be a good thing in, in general. You know, where we, think right. it's, where we think we can maintain community safety standards and give people choices. I think that's a, a, a positive. It's like, you know, do you want to talk to your doctor or do you want the nurse? You know, it's... Yeah. One of those. Um, I uh, just to to get to the next one riot. I put as blue, but I'm thinking it might be yellow. We might want community safety also to show up because uh, we don't know what the riot is. Uh, but and so perhaps also not now, but a definition of riot. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, 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 <laughs> David, I well, think I, that was. Well, I think we've already uh, um, established two categories for major public disturbance and minor public disturbance. Yeah. Um, uh, I've seen um, videos of some of the things that happened years ago at UMass, and I was dubious, but when I looked at the videos, I said, 
that's a riot. <laughs> so, and I think anybody who I, I, I think I think this the riot, riot assumes because it's a major disturbance. Riot assumes that things are very out of control. A lot of destruction is happening, yeah. and that it's 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 beyond what I would think of as community safety. I, I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. Because you don't want to put the police in the position of having to protect the community safety officers on top of right, protecting right, themselves yeah, and yeah. the public, okay. you know? Like a riot. I, and, and in fact, with the Capitol, there was a moment, you know, where it was sort of declared a riot. I, I, my understanding is in law enforcement, that can sort of happen. There's, like it's a state of emergency and that, that would sort of, you know, that would be the moment where, where community safety would step back and the police would sort of be in to kind of deal with something that's, you know, we expect to be extraordinary and, and almost never happen, but at least we would be, have a plan for it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, drug offenses, I think we probably all agree on this one. Um, moving along, pr uh, property crimes, breaking and entering larceny in progress. Uh, and then uh, I'll get, there's in progress and like the other one, the, we could say emergent and non-emergent on this after the fact. Uh, I don't know what, who else would follow this up? Um, uh, it, 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 would community safety follow up breaking and entering? I, I don't see quite why they would. Well, I, I, I think the answer to that question is because it's not an armed police officer. And there, to me, there is value anytime we do not send an armed police officer unnecessarily. What, what is, what's being asked for in, 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 the, um, in the call? Take a report. That's typically what they do. Take a report. Um, and, um, you know, in, in a perfect world, we would like to think um, that um, police officers, uh, th that they do fingerprints and uh, all this fancy forensic stuff. I mean, the reality is they rarely do that. Um, and uh, it, it's probably not going to happen. And is that, does that report, David, does that require any special skill set to take the report? Not, not anything that you need a badge and a gun for. Okay, all right. You, yeah, so it's something that we could potentially train community people to do and, and routinely sure. do. Okay, uh, property checks, uh, uh, alarms, do people agree that police should respond to burglar alarms? Which is a category of property checks. It's not, not all property checks are alarms, are they? No, no. Okay, just want to make sure. There's, an, there's another category, there's another category under that, Cynthia, yeah. uh, drive, driving by to, uh, to check on property. That's different from alarms. Alarms are you know, um, uh, usually they're false, but, uh, you know, burglary in progress. You know, I sort of like the idea of, of the drive-bys being, being green. Um, and, uh, and I'm not gonna insist on this, but I, I, I think of it that, you know, and I'm very persuaded by David who's really pushed on this and pushed on this um, about how, you know, this is, a, this is a potential for police mischief, so to speak, even if you don't, maybe I shouldn't say it that way. I don't, I don't wanna cast dispersions on the police, but, but in any event, that this is something they may not need to be involved in. It raises questions of who's suspicious. Um, you know, it's kind of becomes more of like the neighborhood watch kind of thing and that people might be less likely, you know, to commit certain kinds of crimes if they just know that there's folks driving by all the time, community members who are observing. Um, it's really to kind of, it's really trying to create that sense that, that people are looking. And so you're not gonna like just be breaking into someone's house because anybody could be going by and observing. Um, anyway, so, and of course, if somebody observes something that they feel they need needs intervention, I suppose they would then call it into the police if they felt like there was somebody actually actively breaking into somebody's house or, or actively stealing something. I don't know what you think about that, David, because you've been. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I you, you, you've pretty much covered it, Nambi. I, I, I think it's a false assumption to assume that it is 
that an armed police officer that what keeps what is what prevents people from committing crime. I, I think that's just a false presumption. Cynthia, you okay with making it green? Yeah, I just want to make sure when I think of an alarm, I think of an electronic device that gets hooked up to the police or fire station. So uh, what, what is this including that phone call where I think I see someone in my backyard? No, no, no. This is, this is actual um, uh, home alarm, business alarm systems going off saying something irregular is going on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, 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 property checks, I don't know where um, those uh, calls are, but it wouldn't be under property checks. That would be people checks. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've just heard time and time again that that is the number one yes, thing NPD does. So whatever that number one thing is, I think we need to know exactly what's included in there. Yeah, alarms, I, I, not alarms. What? Yeah, I don't think the uh, alarm category is particularly helpful because if it's a, a if if it means uh, it, it's by definition, I guess, an emergency if it means crime in progress. Um, uh, so, uh, I mean, I think most of these alarms, what we're all envisioning is, is that it's a, a break-in uh, in progress. Um, and, well, well, and, yeah. and I think that, you know. It's like the fire department, David. Half, half the time, you know, smoke detectors go off and it's just a faulty device. Un understood, but but you still want the fire department to respond, right. and I think right. you still want the police um, to respond. Right. But, right. but so, I, I would just eliminate alarms and assume that it's covered by uh, breaking and entering. Uh, I mean, that's the way it strikes me. Although, yeah, I I don't feel strong that it's one way one way or another. Uh, but I'm not sure that alarms belongs under property check so, so now, now that David says what he just said about it so um like I don't know it, coming back to Cynthia's point like I'm not sure if when the police say that the number one thing they do is property checks alarms is included I, I don't want to nitpick about that but uh, to me there is something that, that about the kind of cruising around town in large numbers and having a visible presence that's different than responding to a call the alarm is essentially a automatic robotic you know calls uh, a device has called them um versus they are kind of you know cruising around looking to see if there's any, you know, preventing trouble or whatever, looking for trouble. Um, so anyway. down below, I have police presence and patrols. And uh, I have something called general patrol deterrence of crime. I, that would be the property checks. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 and I, I made it yellow saying that it, 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 it could be a shared responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, again, I'm going to say that I, I think we're operating under with a false assumption here that police driving down the street deters crime. I, I, I don't think that's a valid assumption. And um, I, I think that that should be green. You know, sp speaking of that, I, I was actually thinking about this issue a bit this week, and I, this is hopefully won't take us into a, a rant off track too much, but um, as I'm trying to imagine this kind of thing getting implemented over time, I would love to see, you know, some data of what would happen if we did pull back the police property checks. You know, would there be any evidence of crime going up? I think it's an empirical question, like it's a testable question. David's belief that it doesn't doesn't make a difference. Um, I'd like to think that's true, and I'm, I, I I don't know the answer to that. Like, part of me um, can imagine that if if I was aware there was a place that was not patrolled very often, or a town that never had police doing property checks. And I was looking for a place to steal something. You know, that might be a place that I might go do my 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 stealing. Um, um, I, or conversely, if I'm always seeing police officers around a certain place, maybe I'm not going to try something in that place if I'm wanting to do. I mean, I, I don't know, David. I'm not. I guess I'm, I sounds like I am sort of challenging your perspective. I don't know the answer to that. Um, and it would be great to know. And so, it strikes me as we move forward on this, it would be lovely if there's a way to say, okay, let's let's experiment with it. Let's pull back the property checks and let's see what happens, you know, um, and, and see if it makes any difference. And it would, it would be great if it ends up being that you're right that there's no change in um, in, in, in this, and and that could guide policy. But I can Go ahead. Sorry. I I, I would think there is data on this. I, I, I just would imagine that there is. Listen, our, our, we've, we're, our time, we've come to the end of our time and we, we have to end. And, okay. and we, have to start, we have to start deciding what, what we're doing next. How, how are we gonna 
make uh, what kind of recommendation we're making or what we're what we're being asked to to contribute to the final report. So, um, Cynthia, will that be discussed tomorrow night? Do, do you know um, about how we're going to be putting together a final report? Um, we're just going to, and I think you got it. Um, you'll see the the outline of the final report. Well, one one of the things is, you know, is a list of what do you think could be done by the police and what could be done by somebody else. Um, it's kind of a little bit what we're talking about here. Um, yeah. Do we want to? Um, can, do we want to? individually review this list and put in recommendations for for changes um i um and 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 then kind of finalize where we stand next week what what would people what do people feel is the best use of our time at this point Well, so Nick, let me sort of restate what you just said. So you're proposing that we sort of basically on our own complete the work we were doing as a group. So go through the rest of the list and, and basically make our own color coding. Each individual sort of think what we think the three colors should be or whatever. And then in our next meeting, kind of try to finalize that. that yes, yeah, I, I'll, I'll yeah. highlight the ones that we don't agree on. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to me, like, again, what we would have done by doing that, we would have, our committee would have, you know, kind of highlighted what we consider the most important policies and services and we will have categorized them as those that we think are gonna still need to be covered by a police department as far as we can tell. And we'll, we'll hopefully have a bunch of other things that we will say we think um, could be done by some other entity, thus decreasing the footprint of the police department. Um, and to me, that would be a great you know, kind of contribution. And I'm guessing some of it will line up with the, with the other subcommittees. But what I keep saying is I think what our group should lean into is, is what we believe we need a police department and the Northampton Police Department to do. In other words, I think other people will woefully neglect the work of the police department. Many others will be articulate about what somebody else can do. Only our skip subcommittee will be articulate about what the police must do. Um, and I hope that we can kind of, you know, have that clear in our minds as we, as we, you know, contribute to the final report. S Cynthia and David, do you mostly agree with that? Yes. Yeah, I like the way you framed it, uh, Namdi. I do too. I, 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 I very much so. Um, so if you would send, I don't know how we can do this in terms of public meeting. Can you send to the entire group, um, send to NOAA, uh, the items that you would like, you would recommend to change and what, 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 what change you want and your rationale. And then I'll put that in a, a, a single list. Change from what though? How many colors and categories are we using? I just want to make sure. We're, we've gotten rid of light blue. Okay. Um, and we didn't talk about pink, but um, if you okay. want to change the pink, you can. Uh, but I, I feel strongly that we, I feel like we need to talk about pink <laughs> because I don't feel that these services ne necessarily fit into community safety. I just feel like we may, that it may be another um, an ongoing project for this the the city council to figure out where these things go. Mm -hmm. um, but I I would like but you can make your recommendation that you don't like that and you think it should be in community safety that would be fine. Well, we also don't know what community safety is, so we can say please yes, please no. I think that I think I might make this a simpler process, Nick. If, if we can kind of um, uh, for the pink, just I think the main thing to focus on is whether we think any of those things you're calling pink should stay with the police. I think that that'd be the most important kind, you know. And so the kind of where it goes once we take it away from the police, it, I mean, okay. we can still. I'm not against talking about that, but I'm saying it might to make this simpler for people. We might say, you know, we agree with you. These these things don't need to be done by the police, and then we can kind of figure out the where it goes next, or we disagree on this one item probably should stay with the police you know so do we want to make green non-police <laughs> yeah because because yeah. the because the way i have this structured is I, i've conceptualized a community uh, safety department right, right. that doesn't do everything 
Right. Yeah. Maybe someone. So right. So so blue is police, green is non-police, and yellow is a joint response of the police and some other non-police entity. And we can kind of figure out what that is. It doesn't have to be the same entity, but maybe that's it. Maybe just those three. Right. So it's police, non-police, or we definitely think there should be a partnership um, for some things. Does that does that everyone feel we can work with that? I, I I'm good with that. Yeah. Cynthia, what do you think? Is that still too complicated? No, nope, that's perfect. That's what I wanted on hour one. <laughs> okay. okay good. Sent, what, why don't you send us a revised um, chart? I will that, do that. That we can work off of. Um, I will do hey, that. Hey, Nick, before you revise it any further, I'm racking my brain to figure out how I can accurately talk about this process in the minutes. And so I'm hoping that you might be able to save a copy of this and send it to me so I could link it in the minutes as is before the categories get changed. Does that make sense? got together and played with pretty colors. You have, Noah, you, you have the, the original. Okay, I so can, maybe just I, don't edit it any further for a second and I'll just copy it. Well, I can send you the unedited, the completely unedited version. That's, yeah, that's what I want because I've been I, referencing things Yes, I will send you the completely unedited version. Then I will send you the edited version. And um, and you will distribute the edited version to everybody for the, them to respond. Great, thank you so much. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll put that all in an email, Noah, and I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm doing. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I promise. I move to adjourn. <laughs> Next meeting. Next meeting. See you meeting. tomorrow night. Thank you, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We've got to do a uh, formal. Uh, listen. No, next I meeting. I know when the next meeting is. <laughs> and then we need to do roll. And then we can go. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Before okay. we get all confused. All right. Next meeting, six back to six, uh, six thirty to eight PM next Monday night. Yep. Good for me. No problem. Okay with me. Okay, um, yes. Cynthia, you've been kind of touching base with Elizabeth. Would you follow it up with her? Sure. Or, or would you like me to? Whatever. She contacted you to no. say she would. No, she 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 contacted all of us to say she couldn't attend tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't get that. Okay, sure. Um. But and maybe, I mean, maybe you should, because there isn't I'll a chance. Glad to. I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to. Yeah. No problem. I just, I didn't know if you, uh, you had been in touch with her or not. Okay. So I'll, um, just one second. And meeting next week at same time, uh, at the usual time, rather, uh, 6.30 to 8.00. And uh, is there anything else I ne we need to decide before we adjourn? Okay. Do I hear a movement? Of, uh, do, what do we do now? Do we take the, uh, I, I, anybody roll. move to adjourn? Yeah, I think we already voted to do that. So just roll, roll. Just roll. Yeah. That's roll, okay. <laughs> Nick. Sorry. I'm not, uh, 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 yes. <laughs> David. Yes. Namdi. Yes. Cynthia. Yes, we all are right. all dismissed. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay, Thank, you. Thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you.